Greetings viewers, JLB here. Back with possibly the final installment for the year of 1960 for season 2 of Anime Television History Tour as we leave the beginning of the 60s behind and venture deeper into the decade. But before we move on, move on to uh, 1961, let's talk about one of the oddball shows that came on in 1960. You see, back in the old days, around the 50s, 60s, and 70s, there were shows that aired on TV called package shows. With package shows, excuse me, which which meant that different pro different programs, being animated or live action, were bundled together and sent out to the public. Sort of like how the uh, package features of uh, the Dis of the golden age of Disney animation, 1930s, 1940s, and 50s. Kind of, that's how they kind of did it way back in the theatrical days. But we're not here to talk about theater. We're here to talk about a show that I really do think deserves a little bit more recognition. For some, of course, for some. It's called King Leonardo and His Short Subjects. The show, which was sponsored by General Mills, the company who brought you, uh... High Nut Cheerios, and all those other great breakfast cereals, focused on Leonardo the Lion, voiced by Jackson Beck, a well-meaning but often inept king of a, fictional, of a fictional African nation called Bongo Congo, which is notable for the production of their world-famous instrument, the Bongo. Now, King Leonardo doesn't rule this kingdom alone. He's assisted in all things by a calm yet competent skunk by the name of Odie Cologne, or Odie O. Cologne, voiced by Alan Swift impersonating Ronald Coleman. Now, Odie, the only one who really keeps the kingdom on an even keel, has been by the king's side ever since they were children. But of course, like any good show where there's a good guy, there's always a bad guy. Where there's a protagonist, there's an antagonist. However what you want to say it. King, king Leonardo's permanent foe is the gangster-visaged Biggie Rat, also voiced by Jackson Beck but impersonating Edward G. Robinson, who routinely attempts to overthrow Leonardo and take over the nation, with Leonardo's incompetent sibling, Itchy Brother, who was voiced by Alan Swift as well. They were often assisted by an evil German inventor by the name of Professor Messer, voiced also by Jackson Beck. Because, remember kids, back in the old days, it was commonplace to have an evil German doctor, considering that it was post-World War II. But we're not here to talk about how people thought that the Germans were evil th back then, because, in my mind, that's irrelevant. What the Germans did does not have anything to do with this video. But they were also often assisted by Odie's flirtatious sister, Carlotta. Now, Biggie and Itchy's various schemes always ended up with them either landing in the dungeon or managing to escape. Episodes of the King and Odie segments, which is the shorts that feature King Leonardo and Odie, were, exclu were sometimes exclusive to another show that we're going to be talking about called Tennessee Tuxedo and His Tales. And they featured Biggie Rat, itchy, an itchy brother, employed by Mr. Mad, who was voiced by Norman Rose, a mad scientist with a domineering personality that even gives a bad vibe to Biggie. Of course, Mr. Mad has his own plans for Congo Bongo, and when each of his skills of his schemes fall through, he ultimately disappears as if by magic before he can be apprehended. The episode of King Leonardo consisted of about five animated segments. Each half hour included a two-part King and Odie episode, with other characters featured in between. Those include Tudor Turtle, which were the adventures of a turtle voiced by Alan Swift by the name of Tudor, who has a fellow by the name of Mr. Wizard, no relation to the live-action man of the same name, voiced by Sandy Becker, transport him to various settings, only to realize that he was better off life he in the life that he was currently living beforehand. And the second segment was called The Hunter, featuring a southern-accented, crime-fighting bloodhound detective, voiced by Kenny Delmar, reprising his Senator 
Cal Corn voice from the Fred Allen show, chasing after a criminal fox by the name of, well, the fox, who was voiced by Ben Stone. The fox would often commit a scheme which always ended up being a, with him being apprehended in the end. Now, early in the series run on NBC, yes, the show was run on NBC, selected Columbia Pictures theatrical cartoons were aired on the program, some featuring the fox and the crow, some featuring the little Abner. And these shorts were added to fill in the time to fill time when production of the early shows was delayed. The Columbia cartoons were featured during the NBC showings of Hanna-Barbera's Rough and Ready, but they weren't included in subsequent syndicated versions of the series. Now, after King Leonardo and his short subjects ended, one season of new segments of The King and Odie and The Hunter continued to be produced and aired on Total TV's Tennessee Tuxedo and His Tail Show, which we'll be talking about later, as I mentioned. And that show ended up premiering about two years later. The following, actually, three years later, my mistake. The following year, Total TV launched its most popular series, which we'll be getting to next one later on the show, which is called Underdog. Ultimately, when Underdog premiered in 1964, it featured repeats of The Hunter, and while well, The Hunter's former spot in Tennessee Tuxedo program was filled by repeats of Tudor Turtle. Another segment of the original King Leo show was called Twink was Twinkles, which uh, simultaneously appeared as a feature on Jay Ward's Rocky and his friends. Of course, it was over Ward's objections after a brief period, and it was seen on King Leonardo's exclusively. The title character, an orange elephant, served as the mascot of Twinkle Cereal, a product of the show's chief sponsor, General Mills. Each segment of Twinkles was about 90 seconds. Continue, and continued to air in syndication during the 1960s. And they were presented in a 15-minute format under the title The King and Odie. But they later phased out after a firefighter character replaced the elephant as the cereal's mascot. But if you want to get into the nitty-gritty about Twinkle's cereal, I highly recommend going to a channel by the name of Cereal Time. The guy who hosts the show is a real expert in every sense of the word, when it comes to breakfast cereals that people grew up with. But rather than go on and on about the uh, later appearances of King Leonardo and all the other characters that were in his show, I've got to ask the question, is the show worth... Well, for s it's a toss-up for me. For some of you who remember King Leonardo, I think it's worth uh, going back and revisiting, but for those of you who are not familiar with King Leonardo, Maybe just one glimpse could be enough for you, but watching every episode, that might not be very wise. It's a product of the times, as I said many times before on this show, so take it as you will. And with that, that wraps up the year 1960 for Anime Television History Tour. Thanks so much for joining in, and stay tuned because we'll be entering the year 1961. The year when many different things occurred, but we'll save that for when we get to it. Until then, stay animated, and have a magical day.